my biannual slip of orchids maintenance day has arrived only because it is a beautiful day in the great outdoors and all the other orchids are well taken care of. I would like to address two orchids because their pots are broken and also because since they were potted up, I never unpotted them. My setup is Lekka and self-watering, so it's not like I have to repot these orchids that often. But today is the day where we will check the root system on two orchids, and I look forward to sharing a few discoveries with you. And no, there is no blush on my makeup brush. <laughs> This is just the way that I deal with dust on these leaves that have a little bit of a fuzziness about them. I don't like to put water on these leaves, so I just brush them off with a beautiful, soft, soft makeup brush. Something that at the moment I don't require much. <laughs> this is Paphia Petalum Chocolate Mint or Mint Chocolate. Mint Chocolate, I always get them confused. So all this one is getting is just a little bit of dusting. Right now, they are living in the blooming alley on the lowest shelf in bright shade. No direct sun, not tink. And in the winter, I have them inside in similar conditions, except much, much colder. So, let's see if this one needs water. Yeah, you see, this time of year, be it July, whenever you're watching this, it could be winter, July, in southern Spain. We've got about 35 degrees Celsius outside. Now this reservoir would be ideal for the winter. It's half full. This is just plain RO water, and then I just top it up. And if the pot actually sits on the water a little bit this time of year, it doesn't matter. At least there is enough water for another three or four days. This fan, I was hoping it would bloom, but it didn't, desafortunadamente, but mint chocolate is done. Paphiopetalum delinatii, on the other hand, did bloom. First time bloomer, so she went from a very tiny little seedling to a blooming size orchid only in a matter of five years. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to see. And she is growing a new fan. And because she was repotted, I put her lower in the pot because as long as roots grow and they grow well on these orchids, eventually, the orchid will lift herself up and out of the pot and I don't want to lose any roots growing at the base so I don't want to be repotting all the time. I want to take advantage of my inorganic setup and not mess around too much with these orchids. Just let them do their thing and because I want to make sure that any roots that escape me, like you see this one right here, I did top dress with Akadama and this pot feels rather light and that is because we can add a little bit of water. And once the water wicks up, it also makes the Akadama nice and wet. And that is why that root is also still functioning. Awesome. Let's just check the progress of the little fan. Make sure there are no mealybugs. Don't want anything taking that fan out. Uh, that is potentially a future bloom. Now we come to the ones that I would like to repot. This is Gloria Nago. She doesn't look like she has fuzzy leaves, but she has fuzzy leaves. So before I get her all wet and possibly, you know, make the dusting a little bit more cumbersome, we're gonna give her a little brush down. Gloria Nagel has never bloomed for me, and oh my goodness, yes, these are notoriously slow growers, but Gloria Nagel takes the biscuit. She really does. You can see why I want to repot her. Not that she needs it, it's just, you know, the rim of the pot. It's gone. So, since 2019, she's lost several leaves, but she's grown several leaves. This one here being the longest. She's working on another leaf, whoop-de-doo. We'll see whenever she decides to bloom. And since, sorry, since this year, 2019, I have not repotted her. So this should be interesting. Let's have a look-see. Pot was nice and full. And let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, oh boy, high noon. Ooh, we don't like that at all. Not one bit. I've had these white spots, fungus things 
with other slipper orchids but i took care of them with some garlic alcohol and a little bit of hydrogen peroxide so it wasn't like it was a big deal ah pity this root is kinked okay we can get rid of that that's all gone all the way to the base but we have a beautiful root right at the top so we want to make sure we don't get into that one and in making sure we don't get into that one we'll just remove it a little bit further away from the one that's looking beautiful and go in at a different angle okay how are you you are firm you are not firm you are firm at the top but not down here however i'm going to leave that little bit on Ooh, this one is not firm at all and we can see that by the oozing at the base so we'll take that off we'll get some hydrogen peroxide for that which i'm kind of loath to do because of the root tips but we have to so let's just give that a little bit of a treatment here let it fizz three roots in active growth that's not too bad I'm quite happy with that. For Gloria Nagel, anything is good. Even a single root, I would be thrilled. Three, <laughs> I consider that successful. I know, I'm not picky when it comes to these at all. And let's see if we can get rid of this one. And I wonder what else we can remove that has all the white dots on there. From what I gather, the fungus is not harming the orchid at all. It was just time for me to go in and do some maintenance, which is what this is all about. So because hydrogen peroxide, after it's done its fizzing and all that fun stuff, it turns into water. I'm just going to leave it like that. And while I could use the Lekka again, I'm not going to. Clearly, this is going to be sterilized and I shall have a great time doing it. Let's get your pot, young lady. Back in the day, I used more of the smaller Lekka. That's pretty good, medium to small. Some large ones jumped in there. We're gonna go with small Lekka again. Seeing as she doesn't have that many roots, I don't need to put water in there. It's all good. No need to get too wasteful on the resources. But I do wanna make sure I keep her nice and low in the pot. Again. Settle her in. And in this way, we can also watch the progress of the roots by means of how quickly is she going to raise herself up. And I would say, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that could be five to 10 years from now, judging by her speed of growth. <laughs> oh, let's just say, if you're new to my channel, welcome, consider subscribing. That would be amazing support. I would appreciate it. And like the video, because that is something that YouTube appreciates. So I do appreciate that YouTube happens to like videos that I get a thumbs up. So I would appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. Here we go. Now, I just wanna make sure that I don't overdo it while I still have a nice warm climate for several more months, even though the base needs to be somewhat covered. We don't want the base too deep because I don't want this orchid to start to rot out on me. So we'll just leave a little bit of air around it and see how she does. If, for example, a root were to grow, then I can always fill up with some more Weleka. And that looks to be just fine. There's a little bit going on at this side I'm not too pleased about. So let's do it like that. Let's put her tag in and let Gloria Nagel get on with it maybe a little faster that would be nice other than that mm -mm. oh that's a lot of dusty debris from the rinsed lecker so we'll just tip that out put some fresh water in and let the pot settle on the water because the roots aren't that long and i do not want a dry top layer to take out any of the new roots that we just saw 
If I fertilize my slipper orchids as they are in active growth, oh, it doesn't even happen once a month. Maybe two times a year. Let me just say, I probably do it once a year and that is a well-balanced fertilizer at 100 parts per million. No more. That's it. Okay, you're done. Next up is my Spicerianum. Mm, I wish it would have bloomed for us. Now I want to repot her, not because there's anything wrong in the pot, but this is a setup that doesn't have a mask that isn't solid. And I've tried to put all kinds of stoppers, glues, silicon on the bottom. It still leaks. So I had it on a lid and it's just a mess. And hey, look, we're at it. Ooh, don't set her down just yet. Root growing out of the bottom. That's cool. There we go. Okay, we're not going to set her down just yet until we get her out of the pot. But before we get her out of the pot, I do want to see if I can wipe the leaves off. I've got all sorts of accumulations going on here. And I hope that the little bit of sunshine that is now on the leaves is not going to be detrimental to them. But needs must while I have her over here. I mean, she's going to get dusty and hairy. Fur baby hairy again. She's not the hairy kind with the fuzz that we saw with the other paths. But my dogs seem to think that oh, she can be fuzzy as well and throw hair at her. So... <laughs> Okay, so another thing is that normally when I work with LECA and orchid roots as such, I go with large LECA if I'm working with large chunky roots, or small LECA, I go with fine roots, you know, like oncidiums and such. However, with the paphiopedlums, the slipper orchids, it's all a little bit different because they really, really like their water. So there's more wicking, more moisture retention, there's more going on around the roots in form of water if I use small leca. And for that reason, no matter the size of the roots on a slipper orchid, the size of my leca is always small. Now, let's see what comes out of the pot. This is also her first time, and I got her in 2020. And she is a blooming size one, even though this would be the second season she skipped blooming for us. Tisk, tisk, tisk. But, you know, she's not in the way. Okay, this pot it feels a little bit firm. I would love to say it's because of the roots, but it's also a different kind of PVC plastic pot, so I'm going to be cautiously optimistic. Now, I didn't pre-soak her soaker, but I did have the pot, the water level, really, really high. So we'll see what comes out. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> That's okay. Let's see. If we lose that root, that would be a re Oops! <laughs> While I am enjoying the heat, I was just saying we've got 35 degrees Celsius today. My camera objected. So, where were we? Ah, yes. <laughs> Apart from the fact that we were at the staging area by the hedge, we are now on the east side patio table. The camera is in the shade and I think we'll be okay from here on in. What I did do though in the meantime while I waited for the equipment to cool down is soak the orchid a little bit in some plain RO water. Oh, and the discoveries are endless. Look at those beautiful new roots. So, can we say she's pot bound? Is that why I felt resistance or is it just the different material of the pot? We'll continue. We'll find out soon enough. Either way, I'm really pleased with the new root tips. They're everywhere. While I squeeze, I don't want to abrase them. So I'm trying to be mindful of Lekka touching the root tips as I continue going around and around and around squeezing. There was something so zen being over there by the hedge. Now that I'm more closer to the road, I feel like I have to be shouting again. <laughs> okay, you're coming. You're coming with me, let's go. There we go. Oh, you guys, this is a pretty, pretty sight. Yes, I'm loving the progress. So it's not because of the root issues that she didn't bloom. Maybe it's just the cycle of the orchid. Maybe she needs a little bit more fertilizer, but I'm not going to give that to her. Because right now, as long as she's growing well, I'm happy 
with what's going on. The roots are looking superb. I don't think I have a single dead root in here. Nope, I don't, but I did bruise one right here. You see that? The fuzz is gone. Aw. There. I hope it won't affect the overall health of it. Okay, let me get rid of this and let's get the new pot. There we go. Not going to be fussing around too much. Now the new pot is not that much bigger. I'm going from 8 centimeters to 15 centimeters. Judging by the root system of this orchid, this is perfect. And because she has so much of that root system, we're going to put water into the pot so that the leka can just fill around easily and gently. And because we've got so much of it, I'm going to take the loop down a notch because the roots are going to go right at the base. Same procedure as with the other one. Get her in as low as possible into the pot so that maybe in four years time we will be seeing her again a little bit sooner than the Gloria Noggle. But I do want her low so there's no need for Lekka at the base. And even though I see large Lekka in here, we're only going with small Lekka from here on in, bit by bit. And I'm keeping an eye out for how the water level is going up. Seems like here is a new growth that tried and failed. So while I'm doing this, I just want to be 100% aware as I fill the pot with Lekka, the water level will rise. And what I'm trying to avoid is get the water level to the base of the fans. I really don't want to rot these out. I've had it happen to me with other ones before, especially when it came to flushing, that I thought I was in a beautiful midsummer heat, flushing my slipper orchids, let the water go all the way up to the rim of the pot and all the way down as you do, splashing away, having a great time. While nothing went into the crown, the fact that the water rose to the base of the plant and got into the leaf joints was enough to take the orchid out and I incurred rot. During the summer months, I was baffled and it was a green one. It wasn't one of the ones with the dark mottled leaves. It was one like this with, you know, the light green mottling, a Mordier type back in the day. I was flabbergasted, shocked, to be honest, because I never expected that. They live where they live. There's plenty of breeze and it's warm enough and still rot. Mm -mm -mm. So we'll just respect what we see, cover up the root tips, and then go to the other side and do exactly the same. That is the old fan. Did this one bloom? Yeah, this was the one that bloomed. She's growing one there. This one didn't bloom, and she's growing one there. Normally, if she were to bloom, I should be seeing something getting chubby in the base and there's nothing there. So we're going to skip another year. All right, all right, be like that then, but as long as you stay alive. And you get your, your tag and into the blooming alley she goes. Let's see that we have the base is well protected. Everything where it should be. That root was always a little aerial. So we'll give that a little bit of a protection as well. Don't want to lose it. Here we have a nice gap in between the leka and the fan. It looks good to me. And now she has a pot that doesn't leak. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Makes my life less irritable during the winter. <laughs> this is my blooming alley. Pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> so much color, so much fun. And right down here, you can see them. There, the grouping of four. That is where they live. Very bright shade, lots of breeze. Just a reminder, when you flush your slipper orchids, do not let the flushing water reach all the way to the top of the media. When you soak your slipper orchids, do not soak them, letting the water reach all the way to the top of the media. Those fans down there are delicados. With roots in the pot, just soak halfway. And when you flush, 
be very careful. Just keep it below the base of the fan. What I'm going to do moving forward with my Gloria Nagel, because her new roots are very superficial, all I'm going to do is flush very carefully around the perimeter, not getting close to the fan itself, just the perimeter and not letting it rise all the way to the top. But I will be flushing from here on in pretty regularly just to make sure that the new roots know where I want them to go, down and grow. I hope you enjoyed this very relaxed maintenance of my slipper orchid video. I want to say thank you so much for watching if you've watched to the end. And well, it gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day on that one condition that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.